Good afternoon. I'd like to uh, welcome you to the March uh, 2013 meeting of the Board of Directors of uh, Social Services. Uh, I'd like to have a take a moment of uh, prayer or silent meditation. I'd like to uh, get a motion regarding um, uh, today's agenda. I so move it be approved as mayor, Mr. Chairman. <coughs> I second that. Motion has been made and, and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Okay. I'd like to uh, now go on to I, the. I approve the. I would like to approve the minutes as uh, mailed also, Mr. Chairman. I second it, Mr. Chairman. Uh, motion has been made and seconded regarding uh, minutes of previous meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. I'd like to add uh, in terms of the minutes, uh, the board really appreciates the, uh, the thoroughness of the meetings, and it seems like you and Mr. Perry spend a lot of time with that, and it really reflects our discussions. Uh, really well and when there's something missing we're able to find it and go back to that so on behalf of the board we really uh, appreciate that okay uh, mr chairman on yes. that call meeting charles you want were you were you at the call for me yeah. yes you were yeah 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 Call meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay. Uh, next, we'll move on to the status of uh, agency uh, personnel, and that'll be by uh, Director George Perry. At the present time, we have 16 vacant positions within the Department of Social Services. We have five frozen positions that we wait for the county manager to release, and then we have uh, six position that we have filled since the last time we met. Two, one was a lateral transfer in-house that was a promotion, even though it's no change in the pay scale, but it was moving from a caseworker to a lead worker with different responsibilities. And we had one uh, caseworker that would trans uh, promoted to an income maintenance caseworker three that would be working in the outpost position at Vivant. And we have four individuals that will be coming in from the outside working with the Department of Social Services. So we are gradually decreasing the number of vacant positions that we have within the department. Okay. Um, really, uh, again, appreciate the kind of uh, work and reporting that you're uh, giving us, and it helps us out a good bit. So since the last meeting, we've had um, we've added on six new employees right. okay all right well that that's very that's very good uh, again um we did have some issues with uh following some of the things earlier but this really gives us a good idea especially the uh priority rating um how does it look for uh, next month we should have the ones that we interview and we should have those fields but uh as for getting the other release we have uh, 30 days on when a position become vacant it is frozen for 30 days and then if there is a payout of vacation time then that time is added on so it could be um, a month and a half or two months before we are able to advertise that position the ones that you see are <coughs> retirements those were individuals that had 240 hours of payout so those will actually be two months and a half before we are able to move on those. Oh, really? So there, yes. So oh, okay. uh, 30 days and then the payout and then being able to proceed. So we should be able to move on those in the middle of March. Okay. So that so you're saying that 30 days when somebody leaves, we can't uh, fill that position right. or interview for it for 30 days. Right. And if they retire, it's two months? If they have a payout, payout. then it's two that months. time is added, whatever the time is. The retirees had 240 hours of personal leave, 
So they oh. were paid out. So we had to add that to the 30 days. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. I was aware of that. Okay. Any of that um, money that's being returned that the governor, it, will that affect any of these positions? Why well, money being returned? That Medicaid and um, the money he's rejected from the federal government. No, it would not affect these positions. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I want to suggest this too. We don't want things to hit us like the food stamp thing. We need to be looking to the future. And if it's in the pipeline that things are going to change, we need to start preparing now for that so that we won't get behind. And the cannon wants to know that because they don't want to, we, we want to cooperate and do everything that we can. But if it does, it, it's like, I didn't know we were in bad shape on it until I saw it on television. And, 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 and Mr. I want to know ahead of time if it's all possible. So that we can, you know, stay on it. Be you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's a good word for it. And if something now it comes up on the Medicaid or Medicaid, if, if it comes up, we want to try to get it before it hits us. If you look, we'll be talking about NC FAST Project 2 and 6, so that is in the packet in the director report, and that is talking about upcoming changes in the program. That's what I'm talking about. Make sure that we are prepared for that, get our employees for it, and they won't be under that stress if we do that. We don't need to wait until, you know, to the time is here. I would appreciate it anyway, and I, I believe the employees. And we're, across that river, we're going to make sure that those employees are safe. That's one thing that we can do. and. We're going to do it. Believe well, we have so. we have three supervisors there working across the river, so they're glad to hear you say that. Yeah, we're going to do something. And uh, it's in the mills. Well, it's going to be done. Yeah. I think that that's really good because we saw a problem, and uh, we are attending to that. And it was a problem that initially we did not know about. So I think it's good that we're working on that and yeah. getting the information that we need, and that's been very helpful. I think we were aware of it because when we came and requested three additional staff, when we moved to mm -hmm. NC FAST, okay. we were letting you know up front that we did not have the staff to do it. So we asked for three additional staff to help us do the conversion. But it got to the point that with those three staff that we needed more additional. Mm -hmm. I guess where I'm coming from, you know, I was a teacher for a long time. We had supervisors. I guess I'm looking to the supervisors to stay up on it, make sure your people that are working under you know what they've got to do, and it won't hit them as a big shot and if we don't get behind. I think it's very important. I really do. And, and especially with this uh, uh, changing environment in yeah. terms of finances, requirements, reporting, and, and things of, of that nature, and I think that's really very important. One of the things that I think we'll, we'll get to knowing things a little faster is the, um, uh, for lack of better terms, the computerization of DSS materials and information that is helping out that we had a, we had a, a presentation on that one or two meetings ago, yes. and that's, that's, that's really good, and I think that's gonna help out yeah. a lot because hopefully those models and that data will tell us when something is happening. And we kind of look towards you all to keep us informed. Inform our director. If he doesn't inform us, you inform us. Okay. Um, next. I'm sorry. There would be a collective way of doing that through the supervisors. And yeah, yeah. Well, the it's got to start with the supervisors. So They're maybe, the ones that know. Maybe the way, if it's written, is that when those needs are down, if maybe monthly people could write what their needs are, Eugene, and it comes yeah. through the direct channel. And then we would receive that monthly, I some think, review of that. I think what the issue is, Mr. Perry, is that you don't want to hear about it on television. <laughs> um, that makes it bad. Moving right along. I think he had said something, but I think now. one thing we didn't know about the Sisters. the amount of, of what was going on. All right. Uh, 
next we're going to go on to the um, let's see budget amendment uh, for Greenville Utilities, and that'll be uh, presented by Ms. Peggy Quinn. Yes, sir. We've received ten thousand um, dollars from the Greenville Utilities that was donated to Greenville Utilities by the citizens of Pitt County to able to be able to help other Pitt County citizens with their utility needs. That's okay. how we just received ten thousand this last time. Okay. Do we need a motion for that? Yes. I'd like to make the motion that we accept the report and the contribution. I second. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Thank you. One of the things I'd like to say is that on, on air, we really appreciate what um, Greenville Utilities has been doing. They've been giving us a, a good bit of money, and uh, we really um, appreciate that, and we'd like to, to thank them very much. And we, what's, from my standpoint, so important is that it's citizens of Pitt County taking uh, some action to help citizens of Pitt County that are less fortunate. So I, I really appreciate that. Okay. Next we're going to go to report on the boards and that will be adult uh, personal care services and that will be given done by Paula Meekins. Um, my name is Paula Meekins. I'm the Adult Services Supervisor, and I was asked to do a presentation on the in-home services contract, um, kind of give you an idea where we are and where we're going for the remainder of this year. Before I start with the actual bid process and the survey, I just want to give you just a brief overview of our in-home services program. Um, the in-home aid program provides up to 80 hours per month per client for um, home management and personal care tasks. And we also have a respite program that provides up to 20 hours per month per client to relieve caregivers. The in-home program is for people who do not receive Medicaid and do not have income to, to um, purchase these services for themselves in their home. The in-home services has three funding sources. We have the SSBG, which is county money that is funded for the disabled who are under the age of 60. We have the HCCBG, which is our yearly allocation from the Mideast Commission for individuals 60 and above, and also our voluntary contributions from clients receiving services. Um, I did want to mention um, at, in what you were saying about letting you know some of the things that are going on. Um, I have been in contact with Ms. Quinn and my supervisor, Margaret Dixon. Due to the sequestration, um, our HCCBG budget has been cut by 5%. This budget initially began at $314,000. We had to take 5% out of that initial allocation, which um, has to be removed from our budget during the months of April, May, and June. I have gotten together here with my social workers, Gail Haddock and Victor Banfield. We plan very carefully to minimize the hours that we're having to reduce for each client, and we are basing that on the needs of the clients. We're not having any clients do without service. We're just cutting the services as minimally as we can to ensure everyone gets services at this time. <clears throat> right now, the total number of individuals served by in-home services from July 1st to present is 53 clients, and we currently have 226 clients on our in-home waiting list. 200 and what? 226. When I initially did this PowerPoint, our funding had remained unchanged, um, but with the sequestration, it, it did decrease by the $15,700. We've been able to provide services to about the same amount of clients, going down maybe one or two clients in the last year because our provider rate went from $12 an hour to $12.35 an hour in July 31st. And I'm not moving my slides. <laughs> 
Let me ask you a question. Okay. Uh, you said you, you got total funds $314,000. Yes, sir. <coughs> and uh, you got a 5% cut. All right? Yes, sir. All right, but then you said you would cut 50000 some odd dollars. $15,700. Oh, $15, $15, yes, gotcha. sir. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I misunderstood. $15,700. Okay. Over the next three months. Okay. Um, some of the things that our aides do um, while um, they are in the home is things such as bathing, dressing, ambulation, locomotion, transferring, changing bed linings, um, laundry, nighttime tuck-in services, and reminders to take their meds. We do two surveys a year. Um, we do one in November and another one in March. And in November, we sent out 52 survey, surveys and 32 were returned to our agency. You will see on the next three slides, these are the questions that were sent to each of our clients on our surveys. We asked them to complete these um, as truthfully and based on the services they are receiving at the present time. Um, we also ask that if they need assistance in completing these, that they either contact our social workers or either have a family member or friend to assist them with this um, because we did want to keep their answers anonymously. Um, just, you know, where they could feel free to tell us whatever they um, felt. These are the rest of the questions. Um, yeah, um, <clears throat> uh, one of the things that... Um, you said uh, it, um, there was no particular issues noted at the time. Um, yes, sir. But um, is there a way that we could get the types, not uh, well, just the, the numbers of how many people said uh, it did well versus not well, and I get can, those numbers? I can certainly get those okay. and um, get those to you. Thank you. How can you get a lot of participation in, you said only 32 of them sent okay. left back? That's a high percentage of them. That, that's it's not. pretty good, actually. It is. Well, I don't think if they're getting money and so forth in service, that I don't think that's. I think they need to participate more because that's what you use to take it to help these people out, isn't it? On your survey. It is, but unfortunately, when we send these surveys out, these come back addressed right to the agents. See, we do not know who returns them, who does not return them. I guess we could just make a general you know, call to our clients when we made the visits, just ask them, yeah. do they need assistance or could they, you know, send these back in? You, do you send an envelope with you and ask them to put that in mail? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. ought to be doing it, but you ought to get a bottle. Yes, sir, we do. I, I guess one thing, though, even though that's a small number, that's more than 50%, which is a, a good bit. Well, I would man. I would be looking at 60%. that if they aren't interested enough in to send a survey back. They must not be too much interested in getting well, the help. Do they do they have assistance with completing that? Some of them. Yeah. Well, it might be that. It that. might be that they don't they have know how to do assistant. it. And sometimes what's happening is family members are getting their mail, and maybe uh, you know not getting it to them. Um, you know they couldn't be misplacing it. Um, like I said, what we could do. Um, when we send out our survey in March, is just kind of give reminder calls. And as our social workers are going out, we can ask them, do they need assistance filling those out? Have they sent those in? To make sure and get those in, because that does give us good feedback on, on the ser services they're receiving. Um, one thing last year from my recollection was that uh, people were not getting called about replacement aids. And that seems to have changed a good bit in, in this recent survey. We are working on that, um, and as it says here, we've had some change in office staff. Mm -hmm. We've had some changes in age. We've transitioned some age from one person to another, ones that will fit personalities or schedule their, their living, um, their location a little bit better. And this all seems to have worked out, especially yeah. with the new office staff. Any other questions? What you got back for results because upcoming pretty soon, and this is your contract and contract reviews, yes, and all of that. So, I think what th up to this point the information 
we can give us as we vote much to know on so I would think that we would need uh, you know what were listed concerns of the 60 some percent that actually sent in then what did they list and not that one by any one individual is upset but are there trends in that exactly do we measure the improvement <laughs> from a year ago as dr. Hamilton mentioned the not being called and not being replaced but do we record that um, yes sir yes sir and pretty much the results did mirror those of our survey in March 2012 um, we did see you know some highs and some lows as far as not general problems but some went a little higher some went a little lower um, I have contacted Donna Adams, who is the um, nurse manager over there, and have discussed the strengths and weaknesses with her. My staff continues to meet with Addis Healthcare on a monthly basis. We sit down and talk about each individual clients, any problems that we may have. Um, we also make numerous telephone calls, emails with Addis Healthcare to try to resolve any problems that occur as quickly as possible. If it mirrors the last year as you're looking in budget and I think just for knowledge sake we'd be interested in seeing last year's and this year's okay. we can get that to you the data you know, conversations obviously are effective and <coughs> move quickly but they don't document sometimes problems that tend to reoccur um, documentation helps a little bit better thank you um, one of the very positive outcomes that we have seen um, is the use of GPS system, which basically Addis Healthcare can track their aides at any given time to ensure that they're where they're supposed to be. And also the use of um, telephony, which is a device that's been placed on the phones in clients' homes. Basically when the aide goes in, they have to key in their information. This lets know, Addis know that they're there. They also have to key out at the end of their shift, and um, they also have to ask a series of questions as to what kind of tasks they did while they were in the home, and then just a general overall question about the client's overall well-being. Is that new? This is fairly new, yes, okay. sir. Because initially I thought that was a typo, but it's a whole <laughs> new it's a whole new procedure. Yes, I sir. I think that's that, that, I think that's really good because that gives. Um, us as, as well as the person receiving the service some idea that people are helping them and monitoring them in other words there's 52 people over how many there were these the worker goes right there to visit them yes sir well why don't they help them make sure that survey is filled in then and sent on back because we do not want the aid to sway them one way or another yeah. to answer the question. Okay. That's the reason we ask our social understand. worker, family member, friend to that. assist. Because that's a very important thing that you're talking about. Right. Because a lot of these people really need to help. And they're not able to use it, get email. Because they're old, they're like me, and they, they, well, you know how it is. You just don't get, you look at your email like you all. Right, exactly. I was, I was wondering, you guys have something to say about that? I, was just... no, I think you covered it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> is there an amount of time? Is there a specific that if a person qualifies for this service, then they get X number of hours for any work within this range? And the reason I ask that when I see 53 being served and 200 and some on the waiting list, we have. That's and obviously lot. that's a funding issue that's a but, lot yeah uh, and you can't shorten it to where all they do is travel right but <coughs> is there is there a prescribed in other words if i qualify for this service then i've got to get four hours worth of service or eight hours or whatever right generally with our in-home clients our maximum is 20 hours a week okay yeah, 20 hours a week. Our respite's 20 hours a month. But when our social workers go in and assess the client, we determine those hours based on their needs. What is needed in the home, what type of family and friend support they have. Did you say 20 hours a month? 
for respite. That it, that service is basically just to go in there and relieve the caregiver, give the care timer, yeah. um, go care, caregiver time to go shopping, get their hair fixed, nails that's done, or just go to the back and you know relax and watch a movie. Yeah, that's good. Um, I was going to ask you about just one other thing. Um, one of the things that um, I wind up uh, having issues with at times is that patients when they're discharged if they got reminders and help to get medicine to take their medicines they would do a lot better and you you provide that is and people can just recommend that service that they get those medication reminders or is it part of the overall service we can actually remind these clients to take their meds we cannot do any hands-on assistance okay. as far as the med management you live out in the country, by the time you get in your car and drive to, the, let's say, Stokes or Bethel, and drive to Greenville, that's five hours a week. That's one hour. It, it, half of your time is gone. You can't do any shopping. Grocery, I'm talking about grocery store. I mean, time We you do back. usually try to limit errand running to one day a week, try to go ahead and try to do everything. You know, if it's pay bills, you know, pick up their meds or do the grocery <laughs> shopping, we do try to get them to do that one day a week, you know, and take care of all of that in okay. one day. Okay, that sounds a little better. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, you will see here, this is actually our advertisement for sealed bids that actually went into the Daily Reflector this past Sunday. Um, this ad will run from Sunday, March 10th until this Saturday, March 16th. Um, the um, bid packets can, could begin being picked up at Pitt County Department of Social Services yesterday morning at 8 o'clock. Anyone who wishes to submit a bid proposal must have these back to the agency by 5 o'clock on March 22nd in, to, in order to be considered um, their proposal to be considered for our in-home provider for next year. I have one question about mm -hmm. that that came to mind when I read this. Uh, is there, on the website, is this on the DSS website? This bid, the advertisement? No, the process. Mm -hmm. um, the, no, ma'am. The, the advertisement in the process. No, ma'am. And who to contact? No, ma'am. There was a cover letter put in the bid package, and what I did is I went back for three years and pulled any in-home providers that had placed a bid with us previously. I did call them, give them heads up that this was going to be in the paper as far as any in-home providers that my workers had been come in contact with that said, hey, when that comes up next year, we want to know. Well, most people who would have internet may not have, that's, we got to look at budgets now. I cut out my newspaper, I use internet. So if if it's in the daily reflector and I have that kind of opportunity, I won't get it. So that's why I was asking about the website and what's the possibility there. Because as we go more into technology, it will be much more feasible to reach people, prospective services. Is that a possible thing? Yes, that's a possibility. That's what I, I want get to know. Miss Susan May to get it on our web. Thank you very much. On Monday, April 8th, we will have the next DSS board meeting. At that time, our DSS chairperson <clears throat> will um, open our sealed bids for us and will announce all the bid proposals that were received. From that time, we will. Um, be conducting interviews with each of these in-home providers that submitted a bid, making sure that we are aware of all their, you know, um, positives, all their weaknesses. Um, that team will consist of both my social workers, Gail Haddock, and um, um, Victor Vanfield, and our deputy director, Ms. Gwen Burns, and myself. Um, once we actually conduct these interviews at the in-home provider's location, we will actually go in 
to their location to ensure that they have the adequate resources and so forth to meet the needs. We will be making a recommendation to the board as to who we feel is most advantageous for the citizens of Pitt County. And um, at that time, the board may agree to go with us or may select their own um, in-home provider, but the new in-home provider for the 2013-2014 um, provider will be granted um, at that board meeting in May and from that board meeting until July 1st the um, provider will have time to get all their paperwork and all in order to ensure services are ready to go July 1st can the same provider that they have now continue on or do you have to change they can continue on. Addis Healthcare has been our in-home provider for the last three years. It looks like to me that would be a good thing if they are, if they are getting along good together, that it would be good to work that work that out with them. Also, once you look at the survey, Eugene, of last year's survey, yeah, they can tell lots of that survey, survey too. That'll tell you a lot. Well, thank you very much for your information and taking our questions. If you can uh, get that information requested to Mr. Perry, and then he'll get that to us. Sure will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, we're going to move on to uh, Medicaid, Transportation, Adult Homes, and uh, I'll be done by uh, Margaret Dixon. Um, this is just uh, really for your information. Uh, I wanted to share this. This is regarding uh, Medicaid recipients who are, um, or Medicaid beneficiaries who are residents of adult care homes in Pitt County, um, effective January 1st, okay. the, the transportation portion of their payment in that adult care home uh, was done away with. Okay. They were contacted and uh, we were also given a directive from the state that if some of the adult care homes in Pitt County have their own transportation and because they was part of the payment, the transportation was part of the payment they got, they used their own vehicles to get them to dialysis and doctor's appointments and wherever they needed to go that was medically related. So since they aren't going to get that portion anymore, uh, the homes were directed to contact us if they wish to enter into a contract. Um, just like we do with any other Medicaid transportation vendor. They could use their own vehicles and they would just become a provider and still continue to take the patients, but we would reimburse through our Medicaid transportation program. Okay, We have sent a letter, I think there's a copy of it in your board package, along with the contract requirements, which is standard for all the Medicaid transportation providers. Um, we're having a meeting with them on April the 9th to go over the ins and outs of Medicaid transportation should they choose to want to enter into a contract with us. Uh, and just to let you know that in Pitt County, uh, the homes that, have, that were affected that um, we have had contact with is uh, Freeman's Family Care Home and he has five homes. And that's a total of 28 residents. There's the Dixon House that has 80 residents, Oak Haven 63, Spring Arbor 66, uh, Southern Living Assisted Care has 120, Red Oak Assisted has 62, and Winterville Manor 29. So we'll be meeting with all of them uh, to see how, what they would like to do. They don't have to even use their own vehicles if they choose not to. And being that they're Medicaid recipients, we would be required to arrange transportation for them to get to the medical appointments. So I just wanted you to be aware of it because, you know, as somebody mentioned earlier, um, I, I think this is the beginning of a lot of little changes that we're going to see come our way. Mm -hmm. Nickel and dime. Yeah. Some may be bigger dimes than others, but um, they're coming. <laughs> yeah, that's, so as that's they true. come, you know, I think it's important to let you know. Because yeah, we had, uh, from what I recall, we had talked about some of the uh, um, transportation issues earlier on, and we did know there were going to be some changes that were going to be on, and this is this this is one of them. And this would really affect a good number of places because they would be losing money 
and not getting that reimbursement. And what we're doing is, I assume we're stepping in so they're not losing money. Is that well, correct? They're, they're losing the portion that supports the transportation of getting the, the client transportation. to the doctor's appointment. And that they use to buy their gas and pay their insurance and all of that. Okay. If they choose to meet the requirements that the county yeah. says they have to meet. I think that I think that's uh, really good. I because um, what would happen is those clients would be stuck there with no transportation to a lot of appointments. I don't, you know, they have to get there one way or the other. <laughs> the, or the home would be liable, so right. they they must get to their appointments. I okay. think that's critical. Yeah. Okay. They just need to decide how they want to do it. Ah. Okay. All right. Next, we're going to move on to the. Uh, daycare report and Margaret you're up again well we'll just let PJ share where we're at okay from the financial point of view we're, we're pretty much settled down now and we're on track to finish out the year with the money we have okay. and the kids we have okay so um, how does that um, is that uh, the money that we were getting is that reflected in here mm -hmm. it is okay yes sir anybody have any questions about that Okay. All right. Uh, next, we're going to go to the uh, LEAP update. Okay. The uh, LEAP uh, Low Income Energy Assistance Program ended on Monday, March the 4th. All funds were exhausted at that time. The beginning funding for this fiscal year was $509,783. Um, so we um, have exhausted all of that funding. Um, the number of citizens approved for the LEAP program was 2,007 and denied was 299. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I guess the, that program is, uh, was really hit by the budget cut, but we were still able to get a good bit of services out and money to a good number of people it seems yes what was the difference between last year and this year the number of people that we were able to serve actually we served um we were able to serve more people this year because we ended up having more funding mm -hmm. last year we had <clears throat> around three hundred thousand dollars total um for last year somewhere in that area but this year, at the beginning of the fiscal year, we ended up giving an additional $200,000 in the program. Um, and that's how we ended up with the 509000 oh. So we actually got an additional 200000 the first week of the program. Okay. All right. Um, next, you're up again uh, with the... Uh, DSS project updates. Yes. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Hardik Patel was at the last um, board meeting and spoke with the board about the technology uh, projects um, that we're involved in. Um, currently, the um, project that we are working toward launching is the We Serve project, which tracks and <clears throat> documents the customer complaint resolution process. That project, uh, Mr. Patel, began on 218. The application code is in the process of being written to um, document the customer complaints. And the launch date for this application will be within the next couple of weeks. Our next technology team meeting is on tomorrow. Okay. All right. Well, that, uh, we, uh, yeah, go ahead, Charlie. We get a report. Glad to hear those but when we get a report like that would it be out of order for us to get I notice all these are just verbal would it be out of order to get that every everything else was supplied with the data mm -hmm. or could we could get that and get a priority and then if you know us an expected completion time or implementation being completion then we could get that sure. uh, th they are big issues and I guess I just don't understand. We get that all the way up and down on the other, and I don't understand why we wouldn't have that with a priority. What priority is it for us, us being an agency, and <clears throat> an expected date? Understanding that we may or may not miss those, that's neither right nor wrong, but we would know what caused it. 
and it would give some carry through rather than just verbal. Sure. Yeah. And um, what you had did earlier, I was going to ask some of the same things that we did get an update earlier, uh, a list yeah. of DSS projects, and uh, we did go through that earlier. And what would be good is we kind of got that every meeting so that we could yeah. uh, keep a running tab of that. If you, you recall this, Charlie, the DSS yeah. project list? Exactly. That uh, we got early, and it was, it was very good, and it'll, it'll help us out a lot in terms of keeping track of where we are with um, different types of things. That should be a rolling document, and then you know when it's completed and off and implemented. It won't be an encyclopedia, but it will be what is currently going on. Yes, sir. Um, I was going to ask, is the, see, is that the, oh no, that's, is that part of the DSS call activity by unit? Yes. Oh, that's down here. Yes. Okay, I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Okay, next we're going to go to uh, NCFAST update, and that's uh, by uh, Brian Everett. Thank you. Um, today, I would just like to, to share with you how we are organized internally with our um, planning on further implementation of the North Carolina FAST program. Uh, the next phase of North Carolina FAST coming later this fall that we're in preparation for is the Medicaid programs being brought and, and uh, rolled in or folded into the NC FAST program. And uh, the pilot counties will be piloting this program in June and July and then all other counties will be brought in either late July, August, or September. One thing I'd like to share about this is the state's initial plan for implementation of this program was going to be summer of 2014. This program has been moved up to, to this year because of, uh, well, uh, not welfare reform, but health care reform and the Affordable Care Act. And I'd like to introduce today the key supervisors who are working with us in preparation and the planning for the uh, further implementation of North Carolina FAST. Connie Lanier is um, a food, one of the two food and nutrition services supervisors, and she is the NC FAST County Champion for Food and Nutrition Services. Mary Ravilla is a family assistance supervisor, which includes family and children's Medicaid and uh, work first child only cases. And she is our county champion for Medicaid and work first eligibility um, through North Carolina FAST. Teresa Sampson, she's an adult Medicaid supervisor, and she is our Work Support Strategies County representative. And Work Support Strategies is the piece of the implementation that aligns programs, aligns certification periods, uh, changes in policy. Some of that comes from the state level so that when a client comes in, the client sees a universal, we'll refer to as a universal worker, one case worker to handle all of the eligibility needs rather than having two or three or four separate interviews. So that's the work support strategies piece. These supervisors, along with the other unit supervisors, will be meeting weekly as part of the planning process. They will be reporting, uh, giving input and making recommendations for how we reorganize, how we structure our units to the management team and our line staff will be involved through their section meetings. Line staff will be able to hear about what's coming up and give us input from their perspective since they're the ones at the front line actually working directly with the clients. So by that way, everybody will be involved in some form from the bottom to the top of the agency. And uh, as we move forward with this process, these supervisors will be reporting. You will hear from them periodically throughout the planning process with updates about their respective sections and what's coming as far as implementation. So that's sort of a, an overview of um, how we're proceeding. And uh, we welcome you to uh, our meeting today. And, and uh, just wanted to give an introduction so you can become familiar with our leaders in this uh, process as we move forward. 
really thank you all for coming and so you know who we are and you know and you know who you are also and feel free to come to meetings we really appreciate that we got a question huh. As big, I guess I'd have still a comment. As big as NC Fast is, and if I, what little I can comprehend of it is traumatic, for lack of one word, and everything that is going to be in change to this department, why not? And I certainly appreciate meeting all of the people who are critical to making it work, but why not give us also a timeline and a big issue, just like I asked a minute ago on NC Fast. We know what a conclusion, when it's supposed to be implemented, there will certainly be trainings and things beyond that. But why not give us a timeline of where that is and only update something that we look at, and then a month from now, we're not just remembering faces. We know right. this and this and right. this was accomplished. I, 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 um, we can do that. And Mr. Perry is also going to talk a little bit about that further in his director's report, more specifics as to the schedule what's coming ahead but we can we can provide that on update for you have they had that training that um the state was okay as because far as it, from the regional meeting i i got a lot of background in it that i'm well, they look good in that color by the way but i wanted to know about the well the way the training works we are some, the workers are already being given some access they call it a sandbox and they can go in and practice and get exposed to it before the state actually does the classroom training for it. So we have access and the workers are already being given access so they can get accustomed to it, but they have to go through an official training that the state conducts, which that will be scheduled later. But we can go ahead and work with them. The idea is to work with them and get them exposed to it before that training. Have they visited other places that have it? Well, actually we're, actually, we're visiting a county next week uh, because they started earlier than we did. They're further along in the process than we are, so we can, um, we can get some ideas as to how they're organized as we begin to make plans. I guess one thing I'm, I'm thinking also, um, and jumping ahead a little bit, that your report is dovetail dovetailing into yes. Director Perry's report. Yes. I think some of those things may be addressed that's in, correct. in your report, so That's right. that, that'll be very helpful. These people, Brian, will serve as like the train the trainers so that all staff, they will come back and... Correct. These are the three lead people, and then the other supervisors will be capable of working in their program areas along with them to train within their units. To what the, the, the actual part of the training that we actually do on site and the follow-up training. The, these are the go-to people, is that what That's you're saying? Correct. That's correct, for each of their program areas. Um, just, uh, I just thought of something, and it may not um, have any impact on it. How is the change in the computerization that DSS is undergoing now going to affect um, the uh, NCFAS and what they might be doing? NCFAS, we're working with Hardy Patel to make sure that we have enough broad bandwidth for the new program because okay. uh, NC FAST requires internet capability. We have uh, our food and nutritional service on, on it now. In June, we will start with uh, family and children Medicaid and uh, work first and the adult Medicaid program. So we're working with hard to make sure that we have enough bandwidth so that when individuals go on, that it would not slow down the process. So we're working with them to make sure that we have everything in place. We have one PC in the Food and Nutrition Service that have a monitor on it that the state is able to track through the monitoring mm -hmm. device on how long it's taken for transactions. So they have all that in 100 counties. So at any point in time, they can see whether or not the computer's running slow and whatever going on. And then they give us feedback on that. Okay, good. I guess the change is really right on time in that sense, or we're change we're, or updating. We're updating. We're trying to make sure that we prepare. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next is the GUC uh, thank you letter. Um, I'll, I'll just read the letter that I wrote. I really, again, uh, appreciate what GUC has done. 
on, on behalf of the Department of Social Services and the Board of Directors of Social Service, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for the Neighbor to Neighbor program as this allows GUC customers to contribute to the program to help low, low income citizens with their utility bills and the customers of GUC who make donations to the program. You, are, you, you more than anyone are keenly aware of the issues associated with any needs, energy needs during cold weather. The citizens of Pitt County uh, will be served by your customers' donation and more so realize that they are being cared for by their fellow citizens. Again, thank you for your donation. And um, I, I, again, I, I really appreciate what GUC has done because um, all too often, if the GUC uh, truck pulls up to your house, sometimes if you're you really don't have money, they're not going to do a good thing, which is turn off your your electricity and things like this. And here, they're doing something very positive. And uh, again, I really appreciate that. Okay. Next, we're going to move to the uh, director's report. That'll be uh, by Mr. Perry. In the director's report, you have the NC fans overview. met yesterday with the Pitt County Board of Commissioners and this is the presentation that I use for them and I'd just like to thank Mr. James for being with the commissioner supporting us and getting the additional funds for our staff so we were able to accomplish that. Dr. Hamilton was there as well to the commissioners meet so I just want to say thank you to all of that and for the rest of the board members for talking to the commissioners about what's going on in the Department of Social Services. Back in October of 2011, I think Kathy Hardison came and talked a little bit about NC FAST. We have started NC FAST now, and NC FAST stands for North Carolina Family Assessing Services through Technology. This will be in all 100 counties. We have two <coughs> counties that will be coming in in March, so all 100 counties will be up and running in NC FAST. Now, NC FAST is a new program, new technology as to how we do business, and the purpose is it should enable staff to have more time to spend with their clients, and it cuts down on the repetitive process and those things. You know, at the present time, like we <clears throat> talked about, we have staff that's in family, children, Medicaid, food and nutritional service, adult Medicaid. When a client come into our agency, they have to talk to numerous workers to get the different benefits. Once NCFAS is up, they will have what we would call a universal worker. That universal worker will be able to do food and nutritional service if they're receiving it, Medicaid, so you have one worker that they'll be able to get the benefits that they need. Now, <clears throat> this is a different way of conducting business, taking and processing cases. Now, when we talked about in December, we talked about uh, the hard launch, the soft launch. We did the soft launch in October where we were doing the applications. Then effective December, we went to the hard launch where all reader terms have to be put into NC FAST. So that's why we brought on those additional staff to help with the conversion because this system was a new system and nothing converted from the old system into the new system. So everything had to be done over to get in the system. Now this system will perform all the calculations and all the rules on eligibility will be in the back part of the system. So it be a matter of the worker sitting down with the client, keying in the information as they ask the questions to the client and keying in that information. And then the rules and the regulations will be in the back part, which will be helping them determine eligibility. You know, families will have one-stop shopping. They will no longer have to talk to two or three workers to get benefits. I would not have to come in one day to talk to my food and nutrition service worker. 
then maybe next month I will have an appointment to come in and talk to my family children Medicaid worker about those benefits. What we are trying to do is align our certification periods for food and nutritional service and family children Medicaid so that everything aligns so when we get through this process we will have one time that you have to request information. At the present time, food and nutrition service might need to verify wages. And then when they come in a couple of months later, family and children Medicaid might need to verify the information. So we are spending additional <coughs> money sending out forms to get information and this will be a process of cutting down on that. Hopefully benefits will be done in a timely manner. That's one of the things that we're shooting for. We are on a six month cycle at the present time. Food and nutrition services, most of the clients are on six month certification period. So we're doing the six months now, next six months, it should not be as difficult because all those individuals will already be into the system and just be a matter of adding additional people as they come in. You know, we want to, we talk about avoiding costs, reduction in clients, lost wages. When a client come in to apply for benefits, the majority of the time, they're hourly employees, and when they are in this hour agency, they do not get paid for those, the time that they're taking off from work. So hopefully this will reduce that. It will reduce our overpayments because the computer will be doing the calculations as opposed to the worker having to manually do the wages, calculate the information with the possibility of being in error. So hopefully that will reduce that. We're talking about economic benefits. These are the different programs that will NCFAS will impact. Child care, food and nutrition services, Medicaid, work first, energy assistance, low income energy assistance program, crisis intervention program, special assistance, and then the services, child welfare, adult and family services. Now, we are doing food and nutrition services at the present time. Beginning June uh, with uh, P2 and 6, that would be the Medicaid program. So we begin in June, we'll start another phase of bringing the Medicaid piece into NCFAS. Once we start that, that's why we have these individuals here because they are the ones that will be getting ready for the second phase that we'll be going through. Connie Lanier was instrumental in the food and nutritional services phase. Now we're getting ready for phase two and six, which is the Medicaid. You know, when we talk about uh, systems, think about 19 different systems that a worker have to go in and get information. Think about how time consuming that is that you have to verify the information. With NCFAS, all that will be done for us. So that will help us as well. So we're in project one at the present time which is food and nutritional services. We're getting ready to start project two and six with Ellis Bill's information system. And then project three, low income energy system program, child care and crisis. That would be anywhere from October 2013 to uh, 2015. So we have not gotten the dates for that, but it will happen sometime in between those dates. And then child services, they did not get the waiver for that, so that has been, I guess, put on the back burners. So that's not one of the fast things that they will be approaching. Agent and adult services, we're looking at document management. You know, at the present time, everything that we do, we create paper. So we're looking at how can we begin the process of reducing the amount of paper that we keep. So this will have a document management part to it. <coughs> so this just lets you know that we started May 2012 with this. Uh, everything was supposed to be in by January 2013, but we have two counties that have not come on yet, 
and they will be coming on in March, and by that time, all 100 counties will be in NCFAS for food and nutritional service. <coughs> and this just lets you know what will be happening throughout the process. And I'll be talking a little bit about uh, two and six, how we will be doing uh, receptionists that would be <coughs> a law kept in the system, how cases will be assigned and different things. So this is just giving you an update to this. And on the back page, it just lets you know where we stood with our research due for processing. We were running behind, so this was the main purpose that we were asking for additional positions so that we could begin to get the clients their benefits in a timely manner. So with those, with the county, approving those eight positions. We had four already on board. We'll be bringing four more on board. And they will be processing application as opposed to converting cases. So our main focus is on trying to get everyone their benefits in a timely manner because we know it's important that the clients get their food and nutrition service benefits on the date that they need them so that they would not have to take their rent or utility money and purchase food. So we're uh, working diligently to make this a reality. Any questions about NCFAS? I can certainly see all the benefits that you mentioned and certainly benefits to clients of not having to go to many, as many as 19 yeah. stations and be registered. I can also see that there will be a great importance that the clients give very accurate and detailed information that is put into NCFAST or where in the past they may have been ineligible or had some reductions in one service, that information could cause that to cross many service lines. So the information being accurate from the clients, it would seem, would be critically important. I, I, uh, I agree with what you're saying. Um, I think all too often a lot of people coming into the system are putting in the same information constantly and they're getting more upset, they're getting frustrated, and you have more opportunity for error. So I really um, think this will be a good program. And uh, help us, the client would not have to continue to repeat the same story over and over to different people. You know, they come in one time, they go through it and all the information is captured and keyed in and then they're able to get the benefits for whether food and nutrition service, family and children, Medicaid, they, all the information is key through one universal work. Have, have you talked with the other counties that have budgets, having gone to the regional meeting, they, they, their bugs and that uh, I know that each section you have to put in different information and you access, but once it get in, then it interacts. But did they get the bugs out? They are constantly working on getting the bugs out. We constantly get updates about NCFAS and they have work deaths of problems that they encounter. So as they correct those uh, <clears throat> problems, they send it back and let us know what we need to do to make those corrections. This is a ongoing process. It's not perfect yet, but we're working on, as the problems come up, addressing those problems. Good report. Yeah, very good. You know, you were talking about, I was just on the budget cuts, and I took notice the young lady that was up here before says 5% cut. I thought it was a 2.5% cut, the total amount for the federal budget on this 80 some million dollars the last go round. She said well, five percent due to the sequester? Yeah. But yeah, like, is the five percent all across the board or is it two and a half percent? Five percent on the program that she was talking about. On oh, that program. Right. Mm -hmm. That they have to make up between April and June third. I, I think this is where you're gonna see what kind of managers you got or supervisors you got because like I'm in a business and if I got a certain cut, you know, you can cut, uh, anybody can cut just about 5% from any program, I believe. And you got to remember. Right and 
you got to remember that we have been cutting in the last three years. Well, I know that. And you I get know that, to but some point that there's most most departments have yeah. been cutting in the last three yeah. years too. Though. So keep that in mind. At some well, point, yes. but at the same point, if we're cutting and we see a increase in the service that yeah. clients coming in. Oh yeah, I agree that. I think that's true. That as more cuts go through the system, you're gonna have more people coming in. And I think one of the things that happens with some of the cuts are we're not aware of some of the ramifications of these cuts. Because as they trickle down, you'll see Anger. something happening here, something happening there that we're not aware of or that we didn't anticipate, which really makes it more difficult at times. That's where we come in, management and so forth. Mm -hmm. Learning our employees how to go about doing the work Mm -hmm. more accurate, faster, and so forth. Yeah. And that's, look, in farming, I hire people who want to do twice as much work as the other. Same thing. Why? Well, I think there, there are individual differences. Well, of course there is. But that's, think, the reason. Yeah. that's where the supervisors Personal come in. Well, right I, I, think, I think that what happens, though, with any number of changes, as those changes occur, you're not going to see all the things yeah. that are going to change. And one of the things, hopefully, that will happen as we have better reporting, better numbers, we can see where those things will go, what kinds of effect they'll have on different things. Yeah. So hopefully that'll, that'll work out. I have a question. Sure. George, do you anticipate that when all of this gets to perfection in working um, that you will have a decrease in employees? We will be talking about we need to have our budget workshop, and one of the things we'll be talking about will be that in our budget workshop. Hopefully we can have that next week because what we're looking at with NCFAS, uh, Family Children Medicaid, what we need to do different. So we want to talk about that in the budget workshop, uh, if we can schedule that for next week. And I think some of the sequester issues will come up at that time as well. Yeah. But they said it was going to be slow at first. That, that's why I'm really, that we, that's the reason we lost so many people that go to other places, you know, that business goes out, shortcuts and so forth. Uh, I know it's tough, but it's, uh, you know, we, we've all, we, we just have to do more now, I reckon. Well, we're doing, um, we're doing more, and that's why we have the competent supervisors here. Mm -hmm. that, doing all that they can to motivate, to encourage their staff, and to look at how we can continue to service the staff with the, service our clients with the staff that we have available. Well, and that's why we have that project team that looking on how we can uh, utilize different methods of getting the work done, looking at programs, how we can use technology to help us do things better. From what I hear across the state, guys, is that, um, and he, uh, is that it's going to be real slow at first because internet data is it is very particular about getting it correct the first time, and that way you can get the positive and the correct things out. But those counties who were discussing it at the regional meeting was concerned it wasn't going as fast as the original people thought it would be going. But once they get accustomed to the system, they said it should pick up. Once you learn the system, that's the most important thing, is that we learn the system, learn to do it, and you're going to get better at it as time goes on. But be home. patient at first. Yeah. Well, we got to be patient, that. and we got to be willing to train our staffs. And we know that all staff do not learn at the same pace. So the, our process is to get all of our staff where they need to be working with the slower ones that maybe not as computer literate as others, but our goal is to get everyone up to where they need to be so that they can do what they need to do for the citizens of Pitt County. Are these retirees that you're getting back on board, were they trained in technology before they retired? They had, they worked in our food and nutrition service program. So they were familiar with our food stamp program. So they have, we will first bring them in, let them get familiar with doing the conversion 
which would be the first entry level process and then as they get familiar with that conversion process then we move them into processing cases so well, they have to have training they the will technology. have to have go to the workshop just like everyone else and that's about what uh, I think Brian said well we, we're doing some of it initially we can do in, internally the supervisors can work with them to get them started so to go ahead and get the get the basics the first training piece is doing the conversions and then from that they move to doing research on cases and all of these employees uh, that all of them have retired recently so although they were not using NC fast they were using the state programs that we were using up to NC fast so they have computer experience if that we, helps you answers your question we asked that question Brian and I believe you told us from one to two days I think right? within the first week they could get the doing the um, conversions under the belt as far as practicing they, they, they might work with them a couple of days on the actual process then the rest of that week they would begin to work actually hands-on to to get it to get the um, system down to be able to do the conversion the conversion piece is more of a clerical piece and then their caseworker or case management skills will come in when they progress to doing the actual research <clears throat> because they're making case decisions on continued eligibility for people who are having reviews completed in in my experience when we went from uh, the card file in the library to an automated system it's very tedious and we found a way to convert the cards to a sheet of paper to make it look like the system and you enter in, in the, the data in and then they had a key so going key. from the Dewey Decimal System to the Library of Congress yeah we did that too <laughs> Okay. Um, we're going to do this sequester. Okay. Well, you, okay. In your packet, you also have NC Fast Project 2 and 6. This is our next phase where we were talking about bringing in uh, Medicaid, the Medicaid part. Uh, works. This ties into work support strategies as well. There will be a soft launch for all the counties but it would be a process as well. You know, we have three pilot counties, Johnson, Orange, and Chatham, they will come in June, I think the 17th, and pilot the program. And then by uh, September the 30th, I think, all counties will be in the process of using Medicaid. And then it talks about our receptionists having to use this system, NC fast to log all the information in there will be work tasks for the workers to get information. So this is just letting you know where we're heading in the next couple of months. So that's why Brian has already pulled together the group to begin that process. It's just um, information on project two and six preparations, what we will be doing as we prepare for that. Then you have uh, information on possible impacts on sequester to the budget in uh, the state of North Carolina. So this would get some information that we got just for your And reading. this was something. Yeah. Yeah, this is very important. Um, for for us here in Pitt County, what um, impact will that have? It would be a trickle down effect just like you got the five percent mm -hmm. and the adult program. So as the state loses funds, then it would probably trickle down to the county. So we'll keep you abreast of as that happens. Now, as that happens and it's felt in the community, some people are going to be hurting. You ready to deal with it? We're ready. Okay. What it is, a matter of constantly sharing with the community that we're losing revenues and that you know, if we do not have the funds available, then what we have to do is look at what other resources are available in the community to help. Just like we did with the Food and Nutrition Service, we realized that we would not be able to 
get everybody their food, stamp benefits, timely. So we looked at what resources was out in the community to help. So as things get cut, then we'll be looking at how can the community or what resources in the community that clients can go to for services. It's not all DSS, it's all us working together mm -hmm. to meet the needs of the community. Yeah, it's, uh, I was just looking at the, um, the, the impact on any number of the programs that uh, we're involved in from uh, government services to economic security, meals, yeah. child care, um, when you look Public at the health. fact that the teachers are going to lose their jobs. They all going to lose their jobs. Well, what do you think the federal, I don't believe everything you read. <laughs> they ain't alive. How many you don't think they're going to lose their jobs? What, federal government? Who, who pays the teachers in North Carolina? Who put? The teacher, the state of North Carolina. There were already lost. some laws. It was just information that as we move forward, you the possibilities. You believe everything you read, you've got a problem. <laughs> <laughs> On the other hand, North Carolina teachers are the, the 40, they're 47th out of 50. What's yes. That? What's that? North our Carolina teachers. teachers. Our the North Carolina teachers are the, among the lowest. Already? 47th? Yes. You, really? know, you, not, you probably need to read a little more. You think so? I think so. Well, that's really good that we need to read a little bit. Well, we got to keep moving. <laughs> Just be okay. blessed that everybody's getting it. has got a job to have to. Okay. okay. Then we, then we right. got um, the um, telephone, telephone report. report. <laughs> if, if you look at this telephone right. report, yeah. this is information Thank from you. December the 1st to January the 31st. When you look at the switchboard, we have over 138,000 calls that come to our switchboard. And so in a total, in two months' time, there were 350,384 calls that came into this department. So you can see why, when you're coming through the switchboard, why sometimes the call do not come through. But we're encouraging people, instead of coming through the switchboard, get your uh, worker number, call the worker direct. The county has moved to a new uh, internet system. So if you know your worker name, then all you have to do is put the worker first name in, the period, and then the last name at pittcountync.gov, and you can email your worker. So this is some changes as well that you can contact the worker, and that will reduce the number of calls coming through the switchboard. 350,384 is a lot of calls. It shows that we're busy. Yeah. It's a lot of calls. Yeah. I, one thing, um, one thing I, I really appreciate and, and uh, um, for, my, uh, for myself and hopefully from the board that this is the kind of information that we really um, appreciate. Uh, because it gives us some hardcore numbers and tells us the kind of things that y'all are doing. This is a lot of work. This is any num. This is a lot of work where people are calling and things of, of that nature. Um, one of the things that um, I'm good at adding work for other people. Um, one of the things that I would that um, I was wondering: Is there a time of the month or year where we get more calls? Um, that have to do with different kinds of things and where I'm going is is there a, a better time for people to call so I guess as an example my guess is Monday morning is a, a, is everybody's calling but maybe Wednesday afternoon fewer people are calling and Margaret says no it's the I'm same just all the time seeing your wheels turn how you want us to break these calls down by day I hope you're not going there <laughs> Well, since you yeah. can see my wheels go, I mean, would there be? You know, I would. From, from talking to the, the folks at the front mm -hmm. desk, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty much nonstop all day, every day. Mm -hmm. So no so day is better than any other day. Right. I think there's times a year mm -hmm. when it's more. If you compare, you know, December and January to mm -hmm. say June and July or you know two other months out of the year i think there's i think we there's peak times during the year that we have a lot more calls 
on these two might have been the biggies okay um, how about not day to day but month to month oh, well i can, can go we back that? i can go back and get uh, okay. a lender to pull it out for last year month by month and then we can look at but you got also look at food and nutrition service uh, october we started uh nc fast so they have fifth 1572 calls to come in mm -hmm. and you know we can say that that might be attributed to mm -hmm. october november december december we went live with nc mm -hmm. fast clients not getting the benefits so we can say that we probably receive more calls coming in as a result of that but i will get with melinda and get okay. her to go back and do it month by month and okay. then we can project yeah. and see whether or not there's any but then June, July, and August, September, when we start uh, Medicaid, when we bring the next transition, and then we might see a lot more calls coming in, mm -hmm. and what, Medicaid uh, just because. Yeah. What What I'm thinking yeah. is that 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 will give yeah. us a, uh, an idea of when um, we're getting more calls, what kinds of other things are going on, because these kinds of calls are affecting the way we deliver services, the timeliness, the the stress on staff, the various programs. And so this is yeah. really very good. So and I, I really guess like this it. is the calls that actually got through. Yeah. These are not the calls that didn't get through, but mm -hmm. I think what's interesting about this, if this is the 300 and some thousand calls that got through, every, I mean, think about the population is in Pitt County. We're burning up the wire. <laughs> Not only that, but everybody that picked up the phone that answered one of those calls, that person wanted something, and there was a worker that had to react to that call and go do something. Yeah, and, and I one and of the that's, things that, that's phenomenal. Yeah, it's phenomenal. Yeah, and one of the things that that I've been feeling, and I think some of the other people have been seeing, is that you guys are doing a, a lot of work, and um, what we're trying to do is to quantify it now and to capture it because when I talk to you and when I look at what you've been doing, there's a tremendous amount of work. If you're getting uh, 350,000 calls in a year, that's a lot of work. That's a tremendous two amount months. of work. In two, two months. In two months. Yeah. In two months. Yeah. 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 In, two months. Yeah. in two months. Yeah. That's too much. That was Erase two months. that part. Yeah. Two months. That's a <laughs> lot of calls. So, you know, look at that over a longer period of time. That's more than 150000 a month. I'll yeah. get with Melinda on that. And okay. Right there. Also, um, I got the information from Mary on her reappointment, so I'll get that. So okay. To All right. Uh, is, can we set a date for our board to discuss the budget next week? We have, we looking at how much time Monday. we did. No more than an hour. It depends on how long you want to talk. But I want to talk. I want to talk. We are talking about money. <laughs> so uh, we can break it out. It won't take long. Okay. <laughs> It'll be <laughs> have it pick it up. Because we don't have any money. Or no. the lack well, you, you got a lot of money. <laughs> what what you say? The uh, county is about the same. So you okay. might as well pay it. All right, yeah. uh, Monday or Friday? Monday or Friday next week. What time? Uh, we can have a lunch That's the time. week of the 18th? Yeah, yeah. we can have a lunch Easy. time or we can have it. We can do 12 Well, you just need three. to let me know because mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think for me, Friday around lunch might be a little bit better than Monday. Okay, we'll schedule for Friday then uh, 12 o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's the okay. 23rd. Yeah. Wait a minute. That's the 23rd. 23rd. That's a Saturday. 22nd. I mean 22nd. I'm sorry. 22nd. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna be, hmm, Cause I I may not be in town. And, See. Um. Here we go. Monday. Monday next. Is it Monday next week? Yeah. Monday the ninth. The 18th. 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 You want 12 on the 18th or 3 o'clock on the 18th? I'll see you Friday morning. Is that okay with you? Okay. We'll do that Monday then. Monday. At 12 or 3. At 12. What what time? What time? I, my feeling is, at, at three might be better, because uh, at least for I me. I definitely can't be here at three because that's our babysit. Okay, well let's go twelve. Uh, Monday twelve. has babies. Monday yeah, twelve. Yeah. No, I don't have babies. I had grandkids. I had to pick up at school, and I've got to leave. Yes, okay. babysitting duties. Okay, and well, as a good grandfather. Monday okay. the eighteenth 
at 12. 12. And we'll meet in the A-Wing conference room. Is that downstairs? Downstairs. That where we went other day? Where we met before. Okay. All right. Okay. When is it? Monday? Monday, 18th, Monday, 18th. and 12 o'clock. The 18th o'clock. and 12th. I can imagine it. Yes. I can imagine uh. But I have to leave it by 2. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eugene. Uh, Eugene. 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 One, one thing, one thing. Oh, never mind. That's okay. You told me how to take care of it. I'll do that. Um, let's see. Um, I'd like to uh, get a motion to go into a uh, closed session. We got to read it thing. North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11 regarding closed sessions. Section A, permitted purposes. It is the policy of the state that closed sessions shall be held only when required to permit a public body to act in the public interest as permitted in this section. A public body may hold a closed session and exclude the public only when a closed session is required. Also, item number one, to prevent the disclosure of information that is privileged or confidential pursuant to this law of the United States or not considered a public record within the meaning of Chapter 132 of the General Statutes. Mr. Chairman, I move that we go into closed session to discuss the issues at hand. And I second it. Okay. Motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? None being none. <laughs> 